Now we'll take a look at another example of solving a linear first order differential equation. First we want the differential equation in this form here, which is the standard form of a linear first order DE. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find an integrating factor or a function that we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by that's going to help us solve this differential equation. The integrating factor in this case is going to be mu of x equals e raised to the power of the integral of p of x integrated with respects to x. Notice p of x, this function here, is the function in our differential equation that's being multiplied by y. Now we're going to take the differential equation and multiply everything by mu of x, which is shown here. And once we have the differential equation in this form, what we're going to notice is that the left side of this differential equation, or this side here, is equal to the derivative of the product of our integrating factor mu of x and y. So this left side here is equal to this derivative, but notice how this is also equal to mu of x times f of x. Therefore, this derivative is equal to our integrating factor times f of x. So once we have the equation in this form here, we'll integrate both sides and then solve for y. And that'll give us our solution. So here's the given differential equation. We first want to make sure that it's going to fit this form here. It looks like it will, and therefore it's a linear first order differential equation, but we do need to change the form of the given equation. Notice how we have to have the equation in this form. Remember y prime is equal to dy dx. So what we're going to do here is divide everything by the quantity x squared plus nine. So if we do this, we would have y prime plus x divided by the quantity x squared plus nine I'll go ahead and write over here times y so it fits the form that we're looking for, equals zero. Now the next step is to identify the function p of x so that we can then find the integrating factor. Again, p of x is the function here multiplied by y. So in this case, p of x is equal to this quotient here, x divided by the quantity x squared plus nine which means now we can find our integrating factor, mu of x, which is going to be equal to e raised to the power of the integral of p of x, which is this function here, x divided by x squared plus nine dx. Now to integrate this, notice how the denominator is degree two, the numerator is degree one, so we can integrate this using substitution. We'll go ahead and let u equal the denominator, x squared plus nine. So a differential u is going to be equal to two x dx. Notice how we don't have a two x dx here. We have x dx. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by two. So we can say that one half du is equal to x dx. So if we want to write this in terms of u, we would have equals e raised to the power of the integral of one over u, and then again x dx is one half du. So here we're going to have e raised to the power of one half times natural log u, which would be natural log of x squared plus nine. Now we can continue simplifying here. Next step is going to be to apply the power rule of logarithm. So we're going to take this one half and move it to the position of the exponent. So we have e raised to the power of natural log of the quantity x squared plus nine to the one half. This simplifies even further now. We have base e and natural log is base e. So all this simplifies to the quantity x squared plus nine raised to the one half which is our integrating factor. So we have mu of x equals quantity x squared plus nine. Now we're going to multiply everything in this differential equation here by the integrating factor. So we're going to have the quantity x squared plus nine to the one half times y prime plus x squared plus nine to the one half times x divided by the quantity x squared plus nine times y, and then multiplying the right side, 
but we still have zero. Let's go ahead and simplify this here. This is over one, and this would be the quantity x squared plus nine to the first. So we move this quantity down, it's going to be the negative one-half power. Then we'd add the exponents, negative one-half plus one is equal to one-half. So we'll still have an x in the numerator. Our denominator is going to be the quantity x squared plus nine to the one-half power times y equals zero. Now that we have the equation in this form, the idea is the left side of this differential equation is equal to the derivative of the integrating factor times y. So the derivative of the integrating factor, which was the quantity x squared plus nine to the one-half times y is equal to this sum here, which means this derivative must also equal the right side, so this is equal to zero. And now what we're going to do is integrate both sides of the equation and solve for y. So now we'll integrate the left side with respects to x and the right side with respects to x. On the left side, the integral and the derivative are going to undo each other, so we'll be left with just the quantity x squared plus nine the one-half times y must equal the integral of the right side. Well, the integral of zero is going to be any constant, so this is just going to be equal to c. Now we can solve for y by dividing by this quantity here. So our general solution to the differential equation is y equals a constant divided by the quantity x squared plus nine raised to the one-half power. Let's take a look at several solutions of this on the slope field for the given differential equation. So the given differential equation will produce this given red slope field, and then to show a few of the solutions, I pick the following values for c and then graph the functions. So each of these functions represents one possible solution to the family of solutions to the given differential equation. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.